In today's video, we're going to look at taking our tally charts and turning them into graphs so that we can take a look at our data. Um, so remember, the whole point of graphs is to look um, visually and be able to see easily what kind of information we've collected from our data. And so in the last video, we looked at collecting it our data through a tally chart. And now we're going to take the tally chart and turn it into a graph. So we're going to look at two different kinds of graphs today. Um, one is going to be making a pictograph or a picture graph. And then the other is going to be a bar graph. So first we're going to look at a picture graph. That's ones we've been working with and looking at a lot in math so far. Um, so you'll see that we have our tally chart from the last video where we used the spinner to find out which shapes it would land on. So in our tally chart, we had squares, which had three, triangles, which was landed on three times as well, and then our hexagon, which was landed on six times. And so we're going to use this graph below to help us look at our data and see it visually. Sometimes it's just easier to see a picture of it in a graph rather than looking at a bunch of numbers. And so that's why we have graphs. So as we're using a pictograph, then what we're going to do is use that picture to represent the data in our graph. So sometimes graphs go um, this way, um, horizontally, um, and go across, and sometimes they go up and down. So we'll see examples of both. Um, if we're using a pictograph, then we're going to use the picture that we're using to represent both in our tally graph, or our tally chart, and in our labels off to the side um, within our actual graph. So looking at our graph that we're creating, remember it has those pieces that we talked about at the very beginning of our unit, that it has a title that tells us what information the graph is giving us. It labels the different pieces of information or data points that we will be looking at, and it often gives a little picture, especially in a pictograph, it has a picture of how that's represented. Off to the right here, you'll see a lot of boxes, and right now they're empty, but we're going to fill those boxes in with our data or our information from our tally chart. So we have squares, and remember we had three tallies, so three total times that the spinner landed on squares. So within the boxes, we are going to place one square per time it was landed on. So we need to fill three boxes with our squares. So three squares, three times it was landed on in our tally chart. So we'll do the same thing with the triangle. Since it is a pictograph, we're going to use the actual picture to represent what we have in our data or in our tally chart. So we have our triangle, and we need three of those from our tally chart, so we will put three within the graph. Notice as I'm placing these pictures or making these pictures, it's just like we're reading. We're starting at the left side, and we're moving towards the right, away from the labels on the side here on the left-hand side. So I need one more triangle within our boxes. So notice one picture is going in one box. Um, this will help keep it straight and that makes the data so it's really easy for us to read as we're looking at it and as others are looking at it as well. And finally we have our hexagons. So that was landed on six times. So we will need six hexagons within our graph. We have three, four, five, six. So really our pictograph is just another way to show the same information that we put in our tally chart. It's just a lot easier for a lot of people to look at it visually with pictures on a graph rather than looking at a bunch of numbers. So when I'm answering those questions that we talked about in a previous lesson of looking at our data and really seeing what kind of information we have, like which one had the most, Numbers are great, and I can see that in my tally chart, but it's really clear in my graph here that the hexagons go way past on the graph than the other shapes, and so hexagon would have been landed on the most times. So it's really easy for me to see that information. Let's look at our other tally chart that we made in the previous video together. Um, this was looking at hats in this girl's closet. We're going to call her Aaliyah. So we have the label at the top of our graph, hats in Aaliyah's closet. And this time, 
our graph is going to go up and down or vertically. And so we have our labels of what information or what data we collected down at the bottom, and we'll be going up instead of across. So we have blue hats she had, green hats, and purple hats. So as we're filling those in, we're going to go up. Another way that this is going to be different is that we are going to make a bar graph instead of a pictograph. So instead of having pictures of little hats, representing each hat that was in her closet, we're going to fill in a box or color in a box for each hat that we find in the closet. So let's start with blue. And so again, we did 12 tally marks. We can see 5, 10, 11, 12, and we wrote 12 in our total. So what we'll do is for each tally mark or each time we found a blue hat, we're going to color in a bar of the graph, one of those rectangles, and we're going to color them in blue. So I can do that one by one, or I can count up to see how far I need to color. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 10, 11, 12. So I would need to color in all of those spaces. I'm going to color them in blue because remember each rectangle within my graph is going to represent one hat that we found in the closet. So let's look at the green. Green we made five tally marks and wrote five as our total. So we'll need to fill in five of those um, spaces or those bars green. So one, two, three, four, five. I would be coloring those in so that there's five rectangles filled in. One, two, three, four, five. So notice it's going up instead of across like the previous one, but it's still giving us the same information or similar information. We're able to see visually the difference between the two. And finally, she had purple hats. So she had three purple hats that we see in the tally chart. So again, we'll start at the very bottom. We don't wanna skip any, we wanna start at the very bottom and we'll fill in purple. So there was three purple, one, two, three. So a bar graph is another easy way um, to show information in a graph. The only difference is that you're coloring in boxes instead of drawing an actual picture of what you are representing. So this one can be a lot easier. Um, a lot of times in real life, you'll see a lot of bar graphs um, to represent different pieces of information or data. Um, so you can see that it's really easy for us to see which one had the most, which one had the least. And we can also compare like how many more blue versus how many green. Um, so just a couple of things to keep in mind as you're doing this on your own, that you need to make sure you're starting at the very bottom of your graph, or if it's going horizontally or across, that you're starting at the very first one next to your labels. Um, and making sure that you're filling them in carefully and not skipping any. Um, also making sure that you are filling in the correct amount that matches your tally chart. So you'll get some experience doing that on your own today. And then in the future, we'll look at how we can collect it, put it all together, and ask some questions about it later.